Released in 2011, Love Story 2: The Beach Cottage is a hidden object game released by Media Art and sponsored by Big Fish Games. It's a mediocre romance game with a short story that models heavily from the movie The Notebook. The lead character is an elderly woman named Sandy who returns to her childhood beachfront cottage after receiving a letter from her late father requesting that she return there. Sandy travels from New York to South Carolina. When we arrive at the cottage, we're greeted by a pointless real estate agent whom we never see or hear from again. My suspicion is that he was hit by a bus. The cutscenes are mediocre at best, featuring slideshow animation but impressive character art. We quickly learn that Sandy had a childhood friend named Charlie, and we partake in her flashback memories. Sadly, there are no voice actors in this game. Sandy, her parents, and Charlie are portrayed as cookie-cutter doll-like creatures. While Charlie's dad and uncle look like lumberjacks who are hiding dark, blood-stained secrets, Charlie tends to stand too close for comfort and sends a telepathic message that he wants to eat the player's soul. I want your soul. One nice thing I discovered about the game's environment is that it actually got darker during the game, meaning the sunset got redder and the skies changed. Sometimes the animation is a bit jerky, and the water pump behind Sandy's cottage flows endlessly after one pump after you fix it. Trust me, real water pumps do not do this. One thing that is interesting about the game mechanics is that if you investigate an item you don't have an object for yet, an image of the required item is added to your inventory. This is useful to know what to look for, but it gets a bit annoying when you need to access the items you actually have, and you need to sift past ten ghost items first. The puzzles are prone to be very easy and are highly sensitive to clicks. If you click too quickly, even if in the right place, the game may register it as an error. Hidden object scenes feature appropriate objects. You won't find a pineapple hiding in the drapery, which is really nice. However, I found that the items were very small, and it was rather difficult to make out what anything was, even in full screen mode. Having the choice to be in full screen or not, and the ability to turn off the custom cursor was much appreciated, but I found it was necessary. The custom cursor moved normally and didn't feel awkward at all. Plus, there was little to no lag in the entire game. The soundtrack was usually unobtrusive, but at times it transformed into awful elevator music, which almost prompted me to quit the game and be done with it. During the game, I found myself to be a bit bored and not really engaged in the story. When it came to the end, after an hour and a half of playing, I was rather upset to find that there was no real epilogue. There was a hint of an epilogue in a few images, but that was it. Also, it was never explained which cave was the magical starfish cave that the two kids were looking for the whole time. If it was the cave near their homes, then it's really unlikely that only true lovers could find the cave, since one of the cave openings literally looks like a huge cat's butt facing a public park. Not exactly discreet. In conclusion, The Beach Cottage is a mediocre hidden object game, and I give it a score of 5 out of 10. I hope to see more from Media Art Studio, as they're on the right track, but are not impressive quite yet. For more information about this game, please check the link in the description, and remember to subscribe if you want to see more game reviews and playthroughs. I want you. I want you. I want you.